OK. So the Derbyshire was a massive bulk cargo carrier ship. Uh, she was like 1,000 feet long, uh, could carry 160,000 tons of iron ore. And on this trip, which was like not quite maiden voyage Titanic, but it was virtually brand new. And so big that there's these pictures of guys riding bikes on them to get from one end to the other because her deck was just so massive. Couldn't go through the canals, had to go cape to cape, just too big. And on this voyage, she was going from Canada all the way around to Japan to deliver this iron ore. And she made it virtually all the way. And she was just on the last leg of her trip when there's this wicked typhoon that's whipping itself up in the South China Seas uh, off of Japan. The captain and his crew get the Met reports and they get these conflicting reports from the weather stations. So here's this ship that, like the Titanic, everyone thought was just able to sail through anything. And the captain plots what he thinks is the best course and this guy knew what he was doing. And yet, just when it's you know, not far from its final destination, it's gone. No mayday, disappears without a trace. 44 men lost their lives just like that. With the loss of the Derbyshire, there were, you know, a flurry of mysteries. How could a ship that was so big, so well built, state of the art, capable of sailing in the roughest seas, just disappear without a trace? And it had a very experienced, very seasoned crew on board. And then she's just gone when the Japanese helicopters are deployed the next morning to try to figure out where's this ship that should have been here. All they see is an oil slick. There's no trace, no sign of the ship. It's just gone. For me, Paul Lambert was one of the standout heroes in the, uh, in the mystery of the loss of the Derbyshire. I mean, it was personal for Paul. He lost his brother and he was just a young guy. When he first heard and it's an act of God, and it's Typhoon Orchid, or it's human error. There was no way he was going to take that. He wanted to find the ship, and he wanted to find answers for the families. And he promised his mom that no matter what, he was never going to give up. And there were countless obstacles that were thrown his way, but Paul devoted his life, basically, to figuring out the truth to what happened. Uh, Paul was like a dog on a bone. He would never let it go. And, um, and it's because of him they found the ship. And it's because of him that they know what happened. At Marin Institute, they can recreate any weather type situation and have exact measurements of what that weather would do to any ship. So they'll build a perfect scale replica model and then they recreate the environment. So wave generating machines, wind generating machines, rain generating machines. They basically recreated Typhoon Orchid. Through recreating that and running their model through it, they pinpointed exactly what happened. When you make these documentary series, there's these happy accidents that happen. And um, we were in Southampton and we were filming in one of the shipyards there. And when we were there, there was another guy working on the ship. And it turns out this guy is Willie McCrone. And Willie McCrone was on another ship sailing through that typhoon on the way to Japan, friends with the guys on the Derbyshire, and was in radio contact with them. And we figure out he's the last guy who actually spoke to them before they died. And it just, we met Willie because we were there with Nigel doing something completely different. And, you know, that makes the show, but we didn't know that was going to make the show that morning.